Okay, we're ready to get started. Now before we start and let Pia teach you how to make this gorgeous, fabulous gingerbread house, um, I just want to take a few minutes and re-explain the blog class. A lot of you guys have participated in blog class before and we've changed the format a little bit. So, we have this fabulous infographic and, I'm, and if you need that, email me and I'll hook you up. But what it is, the first thing you want to do, the most important thing, purchase the kit. So we're going to you're going to purchase the kit. If you will get it from your local scrapbook store or any of our online retailers, if you can't find them, just go email us at bowpress at bowbunny.com. Second thing you're going to do, watch the blog class. So far this is easy, right? Then week one, we're going to do, a, we're going to show the basics of the projects, like right here, the foundation of the project. And then week two is techniques and different things that you're going to use in making the project. Um, and then you can always view those at any time if you happen to miss, because it will be on the Bovenny blog. You can go right back and, you know, anytime and go back and view those. Now week three, you're going to get creative. You're going to, in between week two and week three, you're going to create your beautiful project. And then on week three, you're going to send photos of your finished project to your retailer, wherever you purchase that from. You don't have to physically take in your project. You're just going to take a picture in JPEG format and um, your retailer can direct you if they would like that email to them or how they would like it in. You're going to send your photos there. Then week four, get ready to win. We're going to have a winner. But what do you win, Pia? You win $150 worth of fabulous Bow Bunny stuff. Get out of here. No, for <laughs> real. Hey, does it get any better than that? Winner, winner. <laughs> So that's so easy, so straightforward. But again, if you have any questions, always just feel free to email us. Again, that's bowpress at bowbunny.com or just give us a call and we're happy to help you find a retailer or you can always find those under store locator at bowbunny.com and you can put in your zip code or we also have a listing of online retailers as well. Now, without, did I miss anything? Nope. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. Oh, the challenge aspect of it. What is, because we call it a challenge now, it's a blog challenge, so the challenge is this. Pia, what product can I use on my thing? You can use what you got in your kit only. So I can't use any other product? You cannot add paper, you cannot add embellishments. But what can I add? You can use inks, you can use sprays, you can use your Cricut or your Cameo. You can make things out of your paper to embellish your project. You just cannot add anything else and that's the challenge. Can I make it sparkle? You can make it sparkle, yes. I do like glitter. <laughs> okay, so there's the challenge. Easy peasy. You guys got this. Now without further ado, I'm gonna let Pia just kinda let's take a look at this gorgeous project. The first time I saw this my jaw just hit the floor. It is so amazing. Um, so let's zoom in and let you guys have a good look at it. Okay, so let's take a look at this beautiful house that we have here. Now this is just an example. You don't have to do this exact thing because we want to see what you guys make. All we did was hand pee at the product and say make something and magic happened. So we want to see your magic. And let's just take a look at the house. We have the chimney with, you know, covered in snow. We get tons of snow here. And then seriously, check out the cute little kids in the windows peeking out on either side and the gorgeous wreath. And then we'll just turn it to the side a little bit. And we have side windows. And even the back is beautiful. There's a little lamp post there. And then look at the window boxes with the poinsettias there. Oh, look, the back actually has Christmas tree, not a lamp post on it. So, and again, the beautiful scalloping on the roof. Okay, so there's our cute gingerbread house. It's spectacular with the icicles and lovely glitter and pillars. Enough! Let's get started. Pia, show us how to do it. Let's do it. Okay, so we're going to get started. First, let's show you what you guys get in your kit. That rhymes. Um, okay, so here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is that right, Pia? Mm -hmm. Eight sheets of the beautiful Elf Magic paper. And then you have the My Word chipboard album. And you're like, what, an album for a house? Don't even worry about it. You're going to see in a minute. And then we have some of the beautiful dimensional stickers and the noteworthy. These are delightful because there's so many pieces you can use in any way. See how many pieces you get on the back. 75 pieces. What? 
some jewels to give it some bling and some glitter. We all love a little bling. And some layered chipboard. So let's make the foundation. So we're going to start building with the mini album. So you're going to take your pack, take it out of the packaging, and we're just going to use all the pieces of the chipboard for building the house. We're not doing a mini. <laughs> and you can see it kind of cascades down. And we're going to be starting with the smallest piece first. And we'll draw out each piece so you can see what it looks like. The first piece we're going to be doing is the front of the house. And your measurements are going to be six by seven and three quarters. And it'll lay on that first piece. So you're just going to measure out the piece is already six inches wide, so that helps a lot. And then you're just going to go seven and three quarters on both sides. And just go across the top. Then you're going to find your midpoint, which would be three. And this piece here is going to be five. So you're going to draw a little mark on five on both sides. And then you're just going to connect the dots from the midpoint of the peak down to the mark you just made on both sides. And you won't be cutting right here. Those are just going to go away now. And here you have your shape for the front of the house. Now it's a good idea to mark it just because once we get all the pieces cut out it can get kind of confusing what piece is what piece. I'm going to hand it to Carly and Carly's going to start cutting. So you just you. cut on the cutting lines. So cut here and here. Right? Yes. Okay. We're going to go to the second piece. That's the second shortest. This time we're going to start with a side wall. Another side wall. It'll be the exact same measurement. So again, you're going to do the six by seven and three quarters. Mark the half mark. Go up five inches on each side and draw your peak. So I'm going to cheat a little bit because we've already done that. And I'll use a marker. Maybe that'll help you see a little bit better. And again, we have that same peak look. We're going to fit a couple of smaller pieces in the corners. We're going to be building a chimney that goes on top. And this is the part, top part of the chimney, and it's just one and a half by one and a half. And we're just going to stick him up here in the right hand corner, or left hand corner, excuse me. One and a half. And turn it, and one and a half going this way. And one and a half. And that gets you your, the top of your chimney right there. On the other side, we're going to do a side of the chimney. And again, it's the same measurement here, one and a half by one and a half. And once you've drawn that square out, you're going to go up going to come come from the top down one or three quarters of an inch and just go across again now we need to find the midpoint again and we're one and a half so we're three quarters of an inch so mark your three quarter of an inch and then you're going to go from the corner to the peak and from the other corner to the peak and this will be cut out. We're not going to cut this part or this part. You're just going to have a shape that looks like this and that's one side of the chimney. Again let's mark it. This is the sidewall. This is the chimney top. 
and this is the chimney side. We're going to give this piece to Carly now and move Thank on you. to piece number three. This one is going to have the same side wall. So you just go and buy the measurements we've already done twice. Cutting out all the pieces can be kind of tedious, but it'll be fun when we get to start playing. Next piece we're going to do is a small sidewall. As you can see, it's not quite going to fit here, so what do we do? What do we do? We take it and cut part of it, and then we'll just tape them together. The actual whole piece is 2 by 5 but we're only going to do one and a half on this piece. So it's actually five by one and a half. This will be the only piece that will be taken together. So Pia, I have some extra scraps. Should I save these? You can save them because you might want to use them when you start building okay. and embellishing the house. Okay, but we don't need them for the actual house. You don't need them for the okay. actual house, no. Okay, so this is going to be a small sidewall. And this is the one piece that gets the extra half inch added on to it, and we'll cut that on the next piece. And this was the side wall. And just remember to mark them. Oops. There we go. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to piece number four. This one is going to get to be the back wall. And this is going to look just like that. So the back wall piece is going to be the 5 by 10 and a half. And this piece of chipboard is already 10 and a half, so that is very simple. And then you're just going to go 5 inches and 5 inches. And draw across. And that's going to be your back wall. Now if you're concerned, I can't talk and <laughs> spell at the same time. If you're concerned about the holes, don't be. It's going to be covered with paper and it's not going to matter at all. So let's hand that one over. Thank you. Piece number five, we're halfway there. We're more than halfway there. It's going to be the back roof. The back roof dimensions are going to be 5 by 11. This piece is 11 and a quarter, so we're just going to take one quarter off the very end. And again, we have 5 inches on the side. Now we're still missing the little piece off of the small wall. So we'll do that one really quick. And that was just the half inch by five. So go five inches wide. And just half inch deep. And then we'll just tape those two pieces together and I'll show you how in just a minute. And that's the small side wall. And the back roof. And that's ready to be cut. Thank you. <clears throat> Piece number six. Now this one is very important that we get them put just right to make them all fit. The front roof that's a little bit of a funky measurement. So we're actually going to be putting it like this. So we're going to measure the whole piece. This way it's going to be five and three quarters. And it's going to be four and a half tall. So you'll 
just draw across. Draw up where your marks are. And now we have this part. Now we're going to be cutting out the little part there. And that's going to be three inches. And it's only going to be three quarters of an inch deep. So three quarters of an inch deep. So we won't be cutting here, we won't be cutting part of this out. So this is this piece here. Now we're going to take that same piece and it's going to go right on top, just like that. So is it easier than if I just cut this out and then retrace it? And then it? you can retrace it. That, that is a very good way to do it. So if you just cut this part out and put it up here and then trace it again. Then it's ready to be cut and you don't need to do all that measuring. Okay. So now this part here belongs to the top and this is the bottom part. I hope that makes sense to you. And that's, those are both front roof parts. And on the very top, we still need three more of the small sides. So that's again, the two by five. And you can take one of your other pieces and trace when, when we get to that point. Okay, and that's another small wall. Um, I have a question on that side wall. So we have these two little parts. We wanna make sure if we're gonna trace it that, that it's not with this, these, they need to be hooked together. First, Correct. Right, before yes. I trace it. So just, a two by five piece is what we're cutting. Right, so tape them and trace or just measure two by five. Yes, got it. Thank you. You'll cut that for me. One more piece to go. Now we're going to have two of the side roof. And again, we're going to do a four and three quarters by five and a half. And the first piece. We're going to do it like this. So we're going to draw the five and a half first. That's the long part. And this is when it's good that we're not doing it live because you can stop the video and go back if you don't quite understand the measurements. So five and a half. And we'll just draw straight across. So we're going to mark the first one at five and a half, and we're just going to draw a line across. Normally I do this in pencil so you can erase, but for purposes of seeing it better, I'm just going to do it with a marker. And on the bottom here we're going to go four and a quarter, and four and a quarter. Draw a line. Okay, but we do have to have this part cut out. So we're going to do two and one quarter on this side. And draw across. Actually, nope, just go up two and a quarter. I'm sorry. And then go up to the corner point and draw it down. So this is your actual piece right here, this piece right here. And that's your side roof. Now the second side roof is going to go right on top and again you can cut this piece out and then just flip it so you don't have to do all that funny measuring again. And it'll just follow this line right here. And this is your other side roof. So 
So these are not cutting lines, remember? This is just part of the other roof. Okay, we still have two of the small sides that we need to do again, two by five, or use the one you already cut out. And we need two of those, just side by side. And mark them again, small wall on both of them. And then we just need the rest of the chimney pieces. So we need the one and a half by one and a half, and you can use the piece you've already cut out. And we're gonna need two of those. And the last side was the one that has the little notch in it. And again, we're just going to trace from the one we already cut. And mark them. Chimney and chimney. And that's it. Okay, before we move, let's hurry and show them how you... I mean, you guys know how to tape, obviously, but just in <laughs> case, taping is new to you. Here's how we're going to make that little piece into the 2 by 5 that we need. I took a five inch, let's see if you can see with the black background here. I just took a five inch piece of scrap cardstock, five inch by one inch. And I'm just gonna put some tape on it. You can glue it or put double sided tape on it. Very simple. Burnish the tape, get it good and sticky. Pull the corner off and then make sure they're sitting good and tight. And that's just your little patch. So on the other side, you have your actual two by five piece. And again, no worries because it will be covered with paper. So it's not going to matter that it's been a cut piece because because of the cardstock, it's now a solid piece. So the next step we're going to do is make hinges so we can fit all our pieces together. So we're gonna make hinges that are gonna go between the pieces. So if you grab, that's one thing that is not in your kit. It is a piece of 12 by 12, um, just some cardstock. You can use eight and a half by 11. You'll need about two pieces of that. And what you're gonna do, we're just gonna cut into one inch strips to make all the hinges. So it doesn't have to be black, it can be whatever. It can be whatever I color, mean, you'll never see the hinges, so it can be whatever color you... If you got just scrap stuff laying around, just use that. And you'll just go ahead and cut the whole thing into one inch strips like this. I hope you can see with the background, let me grab my scoreboard. And all these are going to be scored at half an inch. And they fold, and that's going to be your hinge. And again, you can either use the score tape, you can use any kind of double-sided tape. You can use glue. I found the score tape holes really well. And you'll just make sure it's stuck down really good. And bend it. And that's how you make a hinge. And I always like to cut mine at an angle. Isn't that called mitering? We're mitering the corners, <laughs> just so when they when they sit on a corner, they'll fit a little better than if it's a straight piece when they when you fit more than one piece together. So we're gonna make a whole bunch of these. We're gonna make a whole bunch of these, and then we're gonna start putting them together. So go ahead, and we're gonna I'll give you the measurements for the sizes we're gonna need as we go. 
So once your strips are cut out, we'll cut them from there. So the first we're going to do, we're going to find our front piece. Thank you, Carly. <laughs> this is our front piece. And to that we're going to add a side piece. On this one I'm going to use the one that we put together. And as you'll see, because they're both 5 inches, they're going to fit together. Which also means that you're going to need a 5 inch hinge. Because of time, I've pre-cut all my hinges. And this is where you can just pause your video. And then go back. So I'm putting half down. Half of it down on one side. Laying the other one alongside. And putting the other side down. And that's your first hinge. Same thing on the other side. You're going to need another 5 inch piece. Put half down along the side. And there it's starting to look like a little something. And then we're going to do another small piece. Do another small piece if you want to. Not yet, Carly. You have to be patient. Let me bring the house so you can kind of see what we're doing here. So you can see we have the front now and we have the sides. And now we're going to be putting the other side pieces on. And on this one, I kind of goofed. You want that on the inside. So that piece is actually going to go where the hinge is. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because it'll be covered with paper. Just if you like your paper to lay real smooth, you're going to want to do that. So we're just building another piece. Thank you, Carly. And the last little small wall goes on the other side and another five inch piece. It really is very simple. It's very simple. Once you break it down, it really is very simple. You just make sure you get that adhesive down good and tight. Okay, now this last piece we put on is going to bend the other direction. So bend that one out. So you're creating this. So you're seeing how it sits like this. Now Carly will put on the side walls. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and again, we're going to need another five inch piece. Thank you, nurse. Yes, doctor. And stick it down and we're just building the bottom half of the house. And the other side piece goes on the other side. We're going from flat to 3D. Okay. And now you can see it's coming together. It's starting to look like a house. Beautiful. And now we just need to put the back on. The back wall. Oh, the one that says back wall? The one that says back wall, that would, yes, that would be the one, Carly. Very good. See, she's learning. Same five inches? Same five inches, yes. Because all of these are going to be five inches because they're all the same height. And one more five inch piece on the very end. In half on, and then we're going to put it together. The long piece goes together at the very end. Okay, now 
now you have the base of the house. And now we need to build the roof. Yes, because it's going to snow. It's going to snow. We need a roof. One quick tip. If you're going to put in windows like I did, or a door, or anything you want to cut out, it's good to cut it all out before you put all this together. Because it's really hard once it's put together. You can still do it where it's semi-flat, but it's just a lot easier to do before all the pieces are taped together. So on your front piece, before you hinge it and everything, just cut out, you know, if you want windows on the front piece or windows on the side, just cut those out before you hinge them all together. Correct. It's just trial and error. I've learned it's easier to cut when you have a flat surface than when it's all put together. It makes it a lot harder to start cutting. Yeah, and you cut yourself. <laughs> and you cut yourself a lot. Okay. So we're going to put the front roof and the front roof together. Those are the pieces that look like this. Okay. And this is a little bit tricky, so you got to kind of see where they go. They're going to go here. So to put them together, we're going to take the pieces and lay them out just like that. This piece gets a five and three quarters. And if you're not sure and can't remember, just measure and see the piece, what size it is. Same thing, tape one side and tape the other. And just lay it flush, tape. And you have the front roof. And we're going to be adding that to the wall. So now we're going to need to put hinges on the inside of the front piece. Because I wrote it with a pencil, you can't see, but this is the front. See, I can't even write when it's not flat. <laughs> Much less cut. Okay. So we're going to be using four inch, two four inch strips. And they're going to go on the inside of the front. And again, you can tape all these or glue them. If you glue them, it'll just take a little while to sit and hold it, but it works just as well. Okay, so set your house up the way it's going to go. And now you need to line up the peak. It's going to line up with the peak. And these little notches are going to line up right here. can be a little bit tricky, so just don't tape it down until you get it all lined up. Line it up. Line it up, and line it up, and kind of stick it down. Go from the back, put your hand in under, see if we can pick it up with the camera, and just stick it down on the inside. Now you have the front of your house and the front roof. So let's put the side roof parts, the two pieces, and the back roof together the same way. Okay. The smallest side is going to be facing you like this. And again, the smallest side facing you. And it's going to go together like this. If it overlaps a little bit, that is totally okay. You can just snip it off just a little bit because again it will be covered in paper and it's not going to be seen. This piece is going to be an 11 inch piece that's going to go straight across. Or you can do two smaller pieces too. I just found it was easier to do the whole thing at once. Stick it down. Looking pretty easy, huh Carly? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it I it just what it turned out being it looks so it's so gorgeous but it's just very basic. 
It's just a very basic building, and then once you start playing, you just make it gorgeous. Make sure it's all good and tight. We're just going to have a little bit of a flap on the front here. You just cut that one out. And pull that one off. And now you have your roof. And this little fella is going to sit right on top here. Now, this is, I found is the very trickiest part actually getting the roof on while you sit and hold it. So to make that a little simpler, we're going to put our hinges on now. And on this one, our hinges are going to be um, I think they're the four inch. Yep, these are the four inch hinges that go on the inside of the side wall. And we're going to put them on both sides. So once we get the roof on, we can hold it down. And go to the other side, and same thing on the inside. Okay. Now try to push the house into position where it's going to go. And then the roof go on top. Again, peak, matching peak on both sides. And it's going to overlap just a teeny little bit. So kind of go with the middle right here. So just kind of set it down for the middle. <laughs> told you it was tricky. So set it down in the middle so you kind of know where the middle is. And then find your peak. Set it down very lightly. Go to the other side. And find your peak. Push it into shape. And then carefully stick your hand under. set down the roof. Okay, so it's not all going to be super easy. Well, that's just wiggly. It's wiggly. It's, not it's wiggly. That's the only reason why it's... And this can be built out of thicker chipboard if you want. For the purpose of sending kits, this works just fine. see now we're starting to get our house together we're also going to need hinges here so what I'm going to do I'm going to just peel it up just a little bit because I haven't put it down completely yet it's stuck a little bit but not much and then we're going to put hinges here and we're going to need the let's measure and see the five and a half or five five and three quarters we can cut them if we need to. Let's see. Five and three quarters. So they might just be a tad big, but it's okay. And stick those on the inside. <laughs> Maybe. Or on your fingers. Or on your fingers. This. That's why the score tape is so great, because it's so sticky, but sometimes it's a little too sticky when you're trying to put things together. Set your house back down the way you want it. Shape it, make sure you shape it just the way you want it before you stick those down. And again, stick your hand inside and make sure they're down good and tight. And this could be a two-man project if you have a good friend that can help you hold it while you're 
I'm obviously not a good friend. <laughs> obviously not a good friend because she's not helping me. Just making her tough it out. <laughs> Let's see how silly we can make her look. Now all we have left is the chimney. I do want to enforce the back side because it's a little flimsy on the back side. So grab another 11 inch piece. And we're just going to stick that on the inside along the back. Mine is just a tad. There's a friend. <laughs> She's going to hold it for me finally. And it's just a little too long, so just keep snipping. And it just goes right on the back. <coughs> and that just holds everything in place. Okay. Now we're going to build the chimney. Yeah, uh, can we just show the inside? Sure. See, here's how it looks on the inside. All the little hinges and tape down. Pretty simple. Now let's give it a chimney because it's going to snow. Give it a chimney. So go ahead and start building. We're going to take a square piece, one with a notch, and then another square piece. Notch that one. And the last piece again, just like the house, it's going to come together on the end. So you might just have a little bit of score tape and cardstock shown. Just trim those off before you put it together. Yes, if you have a true friend that will help you cut things like I did and doesn't cut evenly like I don't, <laughs> you may have to straighten out the may corners. May have to straighten a few corners, but it's all good. So now we have our little cube to put the top on. Again, we're going to use four of the one and a half inch. And they're just going to go all around the top. I just love this tape. It's so wonderful. It is really helpful. Goes. I love glue. I love working with glue, but it goes a lot faster when you're putting things together. Not to have to sit and hold it. Okay, so we have our four pieces. Kind of fold them in toward each other. And you're just going to put your chimney piece over. Hold it down and just stick it to the sides. And that makes it nice and flush. Michelle, thanks. So you pull them back up and stick it to all the sides, right? Yep. And 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 when your friend doesn't cut it straight, you might have to <laughs> cut a new piece. But normally, this would be a complete. Yeah, I don't piece. draw or cut straight. Just so we're clear. <laughs> so maybe don't have your friend help you with that part. Maybe not have a two-man job. Okay, dumb question for you. What yes. if? Because I was thinking when we were building this, what if you have everything cut out? Can you paper it first before you put it together? Really, papering it first is the best thing to do because it's really hard to get in once it's put together. But for the purposes of showing how it's put together, we didn't. Okay. But if you prefer to do that and cut the windows and whatever you want to do first and then put it together, it's a lot easier to do that way. Okay. Now we're not going to put the top on now because you're going to be putting stuff on the roof and it's really hard to work around. But once you're ready, just hot, take a little hot glue and stick the chimney on top. And that's your house. And it is complete and ready to be built. And it was a lot easier than what I thought it would be. So fabulous. So ne next week, we'll paper. We, we will paper. show you some techniques on the things that were done on the house that we did that might help you come up with some ideas. And so by techniques, you mean like what? Show yes. me what techniques. Like make the corners where you usually have frosting. We're going to do some, show you how to do the roof. Show you how to do some icicles and do the wreath and just some fun stuff that you can use on your house. Perfect. Okay, so come back next week and watch week two. 
And again, if you have any questions about where to purchase this from, just email us at bowpress at bowbunny.com or go to bowbunny.com and, and you can give us a call or we'll have the details there as well. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next week. See you next week.